Well, it's been over a month, I think, since I've talked about modern wrestling, but I wanted to make a video about AEW. I've had a lot going on in the middle of moving and sick at one point, so uh, yeah, just a lot going on. But I do want to start getting back to some modern videos and talking about modern wrestling. And we got to start with AEW, which I feel like, you know, I haven't talked about in over a month, and I still feel like it's in the toilet. It is circling the drain of the toilet. And a lot of what I said over a month ago remains the same. A lot of this is all Tony Khan's problem. He has a problem with his booking. It's getting absolutely bad again. Not any better. Uh, and he's just not being a good leader, a good owner of the company. Uh, it seems like he has definitely lost some control, which we will get to with uh, CM Punk's finally commenting on social media, getting his side out. But first, let's talk about the booking, because over the past month and a half, a lot of the same bad booking has happened. We have titles changing hands a lot. The TNT title continues to be the most useless title in AEW, which is saying a lot because AEW has so many titles and none of them mean anything, really. Uh, but uh, the, the TNT title means the least because it just changes hands at random. We go back to Wardlow's booking. I just I don't understand the illogical nature of Tony Khan's booking, and I don't think he does either. There's no way he does. He would come up with some excuse. Hey, this happened, so at least we wrapped it up. Sure, AEW fans can say that, that Warlow did get revenge on Samoa Joe by beating him. But then, a few nights later, Wardlow loses the title to Hobbs, and we're all left scratching our head. Now, I'm not going to completely crap on the QT Marshall and Hobbs connection. That was some long-term booking, at least. Uh, so, I, I'm glad we had some follow-up there. But, I mean, did anybody truly remember that? That they made a deal many months ago other than the AEW hardcore fans? Probably not. So, while I can commend the long-term booking there... I still think the overall booking, the bigger picture, and how badly Wardlow has been booked over the past year is still something that needs to be called out. And it's still really bad. I think a lot of with AEW's problems and what makes it also laughable to me is just how praised Tony Khan has been as, as a booker. He's been praised as a booker since AEW started. And most of that was unwarranted. A lot of that was just, okay, we have uh, something that's not the WWE. So uh, it started a lot of fans falling in love with pro wrestling again, which is great. Uh, I can't say I was one of those people. I think from the beginning, a lot of AEW's booking left me scratching my head. Now, there were points in AEW that I enjoyed a lot. I did enjoy Hangman Pages getting, winning the title. But the follow-up to that lost momentum. I think the booking in AEW, it's booked decent at times to a certain point for people to win a title. But then after they win the title, it all falls apart. Either nothing happens, there's no real game plan, there's no long-term booking after someone wins a title, maybe that's something Tony can work on. Another big problem with AEW, you know, all the titles are still a problem. Uh, and the big roster is still a problem. And now there's ROH back on TV. Uh, you could stream it on the ROH app, but Honor Club. But I have a problem with that too. Like if you're going to have a separate entity, it shouldn't still feel like AEW. And ROH, basically a glorified AEW dark, dark elevation. It's just a, a third dark or dark elevation when it should really feel like a separate entity. But uh, they still continue to just have people from AEW and ROH and have people from ROH and AEW and I don't think that's a good thing. I mean, if they're going to be two separate brands, make them feel like separate brands so that it can mean more. That is what Tony Khan struggles with. Nothing has meaning. He struggles in making things or wrestlers mean more. It's always been his problem. People from the WWE come in as big stars or hyped as you know a big announcement uh, and, and there's new people debuting from WWE 
And then their star power dwindles because Tony Khan doesn't know how to make people mean something. That is a problem. I'm sorry if AEW diehards don't want to hear it, but it is a problem. And so you could have things like Eddie Kingston's storyline where he wants to leave AEW because he's fed up with things going on there. And I think that's probably a good idea from Eddie Kingston. I think that's probably an, a Kingston idea. But when he's just going to ROH and then ROH just has other people from AEW in ROH, just like, what's the point of Eddie Kingston's story? It makes it mean less. It's like, this shouldn't be this hard, but Tony Khan seems to make it hard. And Khan being rightfully called out for the booking of El Hio Del Vikingo by just debuting him in AEW to lose to Kenny Omega. He does this so much. Wrestlers from international wrestling debut in AEW just to lose consistently. It does nothing for nobody. You can have, He's getting called out for not having a vignette or something about who these people are to make them more known to the audience, to give some actual build. And the AEW fanboys will just say, Google it, Google it. That's why your show will never grow. That's actually why it's declining consistently in ratings. The at one point it seemed like the the it would kind of be easy to keep getting over a million, but I really do feel like eight hundred and fifty thousand is now where AEW can only get consistently in the ratings. Sure, the past episode was over nine hundred k, but around eight hundred fifty k is where the AEW audience has shrank to. Now the ticket sales still suck, and it's because of these things that Tony Khan does with the booking. That should be logical if you actually cared about your product, if you weren't a lazy booker, if you weren't trying to stretch yourself too thin, but you want to keep, hang on to the book, you would be able to get people over and make them more meaningful. But instead, you make people like Vikingo more meaningless by the way you book. Khan wants to do a lot, but in doing a lot and having this bloated roster and having all these titles, people mean less and less and things mean less and less and it is an issue. And so that brings me to CM Punk's post on social media. It was only up for a short time. He probably had to take it off because of his actual contract with Tony Khan. I'm sure Tony Khan was not happy about it. But CM Punk putting it out there that Tony Khan made him wrestle injured, basically, back when uh, Moxley squashed CM Punk, Punk before their match at the at the pay-per-view. If anybody remembers that bad booking, that was more booking that left me scratching my head. Why is Punk back just to basically be squashed by Moxley before their big pay-per-view event? Well, it's because Moxley didn't want to do the job to Punk without that happening. It's just children. I think CM Punk was spot on when he called a people in AEW children. And, and CM Punk himself did act like children, uh, like a child at that uh, press conference. But... That's what happens when you don't have strong leadership from Tony Khan. He doesn't know how to just be everyone's friend. But by being everyone's friend, you lose control. And by being everyone's friend, you, you stop booking good. Uh, not that he's ever booked good, in my opinion. I don't think Tony Khan has ever consistently booked good for more than a couple months, in my opinion. But he's had moments, he's had some months where he's had good booking. But overall, his booking continues to be meaningless drivel. And we're seeing more of that. And I'm glad Punk is calling it out. And I'm glad Punk called out Dave Meltzer and Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho being a stooge for Dave Meltzer and the dirt sheets has become more and more well known over time. And Jericho is one of the biggest people in Tony Khan's ear. But it's not working for the booking. Yes, Chris Jericho has always been fantastic at keeping himself over as a character and always changing his character. But if he's the main person in Khan's ear, it's not working overall for the booking. So I guess just uh, in closing, I still want to say I want AEW to succeed, but Tony Khan needs help from the right people because... All we're getting is more meaningless stuff every week. The show is becoming more and more meaningless instead of becoming more and more meaningful. And you can say the same about a lot of the talent on the roster. More and more meaningless. So I hope Khan can help himself and help his wrestling company. 
But I, I don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, he needs to give up some of his booking duties, and I just don't think he's ever going to do that. He is playing Booker. That's what he's always wanted to do. He's always been a big wrestling fan. He's a billionaire's son. He has the money to do so. And a lot of people reference the wrestlers as his toys, and it really comes off that way. He wants to be the Booker. At the very least, he could give up booking of ROH and make it a separate entity. Make it feel actually like a separate entity. Make it feel like a separate brand. Make it more meaningful. So he could focus on AEW to make that more meaningful. But we're just not getting it. And it, it sucks right now. AEW sucks right now. 